unbelievable predictions. Write this down. And keep track of each other's batting averages. Write it down. You like writing things down. It's Write That Down with Mackie, Judd, and Rami. Write this down. Write that down. I don't have a pencil. Well, remember that. Then. And welcome in to the only segment in sports talk where we keep track of our predictions and hold each other accountable. We don't just make predictions and send them out into the world and hope that people forget. No, no, no. We come back. We shame each other. We celebrate. Yeah, we, we do. We celebrate batting average and home runs. We celebrate ourselves if we do well. This is one of the most, I, I don't know if it's like a juiced ball era of write that down, but these are some of the highest batting averages we've ever seen <laughs> in write that down. Usually, if you can hit 300 on the season, you're going to have a chance at a batting title. Coming into this week, we have four guys on the show, including some of the past members from pre-May 1st changes Mm -hmm. at 400 or higher. We'll see how this week shakes out. But the way Write That Down works, and you can find this as part of, as you're listening right now, Mackie and Judd, the podcast. You can also find it on our YouTube channel. We have two different YouTube channels. We have YouTube.com slash Mackie Judd for Write That Down for Action Movie Rewind, and we post other segments too. And then we have a Vikings-centric YouTube channel. It's just YouTube.com slash Score North, where you can find daily episodes of Purple Daily, uh, yesterday, I think we're posting. I think it was posted this morning. The uh, the sit down with Eric Eager mm-hmm. on the Vikings cornerback situation. So please check out and subscribe to our two YouTube channels. It helps us spread the word about the show and helps keep us employed. That's which awesome. Is important in 2020. So here's how write that down works. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We welcome in guest listener predictors as well. So we're going to get to Owen and Mark are the guest listener predictors this week, and we keep track of batting averages and home runs. If you'd like to be part of the segment at some point. I know on the screen here on YouTube, it says you can participate by downloading the Score North app and entering for your chance to play. The easier way is just to DM me right now. We are scheduling out throughout the rest of the year. So just DM me on Twitter, at Phil Mackey. Let's get to the accountability session. Write this down. Judd Zolgad, you had three things come off the board this week. Okay. You said, we must have missed this one a couple weeks ago. You said at one point, Gary Bettman will cancel the remainder of the NHL season. Why are you down on Gary? Oh, this was, I think, shortly after the stoppage. Got it. Maybe you should praise him for organizing a great bubble. I've, he's done a good. Are you kidding? It's, I have praised him up and down. Super they, fun. NBA and NHL NBA has done a great job. Nailing it right now. They deserved a lot of credit for this. You also said ESPN will welcome Lewis Riddick to be a Monday Night Football analyst. Yeah. That was announced earlier this week. It's Lewis Riddick, Brian Greasy, and Steve Levy, right? Yeah. And yes. I, I'm really excited about Lewis. Me too. Mm. I'm really excited yeah, about everything else. Lewis. Lewis is great in his current role. Mm-hmm. He's, I still. He's great on NFL Live. I still. Uh, we need entertainers. I don't. We need, Peyton Manning would have been the obviously. Creep. I don't know if this guy says no or he's been offered it, but I still would take a shot on a three man booth with Mossy. And I tell Randy, Randy, we don't need you to break things. If you want to, that's fine. But we just want you to be Randy. Just make funny comments. <laughs> make funny comments and and just be you. Yeah. I think Randy Moss is incredibly entertaining if you don't think of him as a true analyst. I think, I, I like it, obviously, they tried to get Peyton Manning, and I think they tried to get Tony Romo, so they were clearly thinking enter, yep. like, top-line entertainer. And so maybe this is kind of a transition year or two where— How many transition right. years are they going to have? Well, but if, I mean, if they get rejected— it, Okay, but they get rejected by Romo and Peyton Manning, what are they supposed to do? No, but, I mean, it just feels like it's transition year after transition year— Basically, since Gruden left and then Tariko left, right? Mm-hmm. It's been this just litany of, eh, here's a play-by-play guy, go do it. The booger bubble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you also said the Timberwolves had finished top 10 in three-pointers attempted this regular season, even though their regular season ended like eight games before 22 other teams. They still finished eighth in three-pointers attempted. <laughs> yeah. This year. So they really? They did. Oh, my God. God. They were like third going into the bubble. They weren't part of the bubble. They dropped wow. to eighth only. Okay. So Judd with two hits this week. Ooh. Jonathan Harrison, last year's batting champion, said Dwight Howard will be cut or traded by the Lakers before the end of the season. <laughs> and that Everson Griffin will be back on the Vikings by the time the season starts. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Manny said the NBA will not finish its regular season, and they just finished the regular season a couple days ago. <laughs> so uh, Jonathan and Manny not faring too well this week. Rami said Cam Newton will re- – we missed this one earlier too. Cam Newton will retire at the end of the season, and he uh, will instead likely be the starting quarterback for the New England Patriots. Look at you. I told you guys the Twins would win at least three games against the Royals between 
last week and Monday. They took three out of four. Hell. Yeah. From Kansas City. Listeners. A couple come off the board for the listeners here. Ross said Mike Greenberg's new radio show will steal a Mackie and Judd segment right out of the gate on the first show. I respect the swing. Love the swing. And Greeny has admitted on the show and on Get Up on his TV show how much he loves the Mackie and Judd show and how he has stolen. He literally stole reckless speculation from us and then credited us. I think he stole on a, TV. He he stole reckless speculation and then he stole um, probable deniability yes. or no uh, plausible, plausible deniability plausible. and then he credited us on the show. Yep. But I listened to his first show. He had a couple segments. <laughs> He did not steal one of our good stuff, by the way. It was good. good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I mean, if you like Greeny, like if you don't like Greeny, then yeah, it's a lot of Greeny. But I'm just saying, did you enjoy? I enjoy it. I like Greeny. I enjoy the um, the Max Kellerman show. I haven't had a chance to listen a lot to the morning show, but you can hear all of these on Score North on AM fifteen hundred every day. That's right. Connor said this is when we were accepting Twitter nominations for for predictions a couple years ago. Lindsey Whalen will bring in a top five national recruit in either the 2019 or 20 classes. She's brought in some top one hundos, but uh, is it Paige Buchers was the hot, uh, the Hopkins yeah, kid? The that that would have been the one, yep. but she is not coming to the Minnesota Gophers. So uh, and Declan had nothing come off the board this week for the first time. That's cool. So Declan gets a reprieve. So the current batting averages are Declan Goff holding steady at four seventy two, no home runs. Judd Zulgad four forty seven with three bombs, just a ridiculous season across all categories. Rami Makhlouf, under 400 at 391 with one home run. I'm up to 329 with two home runs. Listeners, 271 with a bomb. John Harrison, 214 with two bombs. Manny Hill at 156. And Write it down. You like run. writing things down. Write this down. So there it is. Those are the batting averages. Judd, you're, this is this is your best season ever, and you're still looking up at Declan in the batting This average. is my Nelson Cruz year, He's though. Got, keep driving me in, babe. Keep driving me in. This is my Nelson Cruz year. I am I'm a 5 tool player. Actually, in this game, I'm a two-tool player, but that's I'm, really good. And I'm Luis Arise and Ben Revere just spraying singles. My average in slugging is probably the same. Actually, my slugging is way lower than my average. It is. You're basically Joe Maurer. Yeah, that's fine. A lot of singles, a couple doubles. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Nothing wrong. All right, that. let's get to our guest listener predictors here. Uh, I'll, I'll punch up Mark here, and you punch up Owen. Mark, are you with us? I am. What's going on, man? Are you ready to take some swings? You bet. Owen, are you with us? Yes, sir. Owen, are you going to be swinging for home runs or singles? Well, that's for the right field fence to decide. Oh, oh <laughs> that's for the limestone <laughs> okay. to decide. All right, Fernando Tatis Jr., thank you. Yeah. Aiming for one of the three unique surfaces out in right field that Michael Kadire used to have to deal with in uh, 2010. So here's how this works. We're going to go Mark, Owen, Judd, Declan, Phil, and we're going to go around the room three times. And again, uh, we're all going to make three predictions. They must be quantifiable in some way, and ideally, there's an end point to them. So we've got a bunch on the board from like four years ago that we just like Larry Brown will coach again. So that that will either happen hey. or he will die, and those are the only two ways that that comes off the board. I'm hedging my bets. So all right, write that down. Write it down. You like writing things down, Mark? Okay, so I just moved to Minneapolis in January from Buffalo, New York home of the four-time AFC champion Buffalo Bills. That's one way to look and at that four-year run, yes. <laughs> that, that's exactly how I prefer to, to, to think about it. And so the Bills, you know, they get absolutely no respect in the national media. They're almost never on a nationally televised game. And the few times they are, the broadcasters act like the Bills don't even exist. Uh, but I think that's going to change this year. I think Josh Allen is poised to take a big step forward. He took a, a step forward last year. He's got Stephon Diggs to throw to now. And this is the weakest AFC East we've had in a long time now that Tom Brady's finally out of that division. So write this down. Josh Allen will throw more touchdown passes in the 2020 regular season than Kirk Cousins will. Ooh. Write this down. Ooh. Write it down. You like writing things down. Ooh. That was well thought out. Interesting. Yes. All right. Well, yes. Stefan right. Diggs should help with, with some of that. Owen, swing away. So I think we need more uh, D3 picks on the show. So I'm going to put out, write this down. The University of Wisconsin River Falls women's hockey team in their next complete season will beat the Wisconsin Eau Claire Blue Golds in the WIAC championship game. Wow. Wow. That's, Obscure. That's Write not, this down. <laughs> you know what they say, though, Owen? Research. You know, a lot of the, the best professional sports gamblers in the world will tell you 
it's a sucker bet to focus your attention on like the NFL or the SEC. If you can pick out a niche sport in a conference and dominate it, then that's how you make your money as a sports better. Yeah, so Owen, that's Owen what our guy Furman flying. told us, right? Yep. Didn't he, Furman talk about that? Yeah, Furman would bet like he bet college hockey. Just ridiculous. Yeah, he like, was the greatest. I, but I would put those in if we had a college hockey season. Furman was a, was my favorite derelict of all time. He's blowing up now too. He's I know on, he's done great, and he's a great ESPN guy. And, but my God, he was he would bet grade school sports if they put lines on it. Think about how many national stars we've made on this show. Big Todd Furman, <laughs> like we, Tom Pelissero. We've made it's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, Sean Farnham. We've made all these guys. I love Sean Farnham, yeah. All right, Dex. All right. Actually, wait, is it no, Judd? Judd. Sorry, Judd. Judd sorry. Write this down. Yeah. All right, so th- this guy has played so well that I think the Twins have no choice but to bring him back uh, for next season. So Nelson Cruz will return to the Twins in 2021. I His like contract it, yeah. is up. Um, D- Dukes, I believe Dukes told us on the scoop about a month ago or so that there were some talks and they weren't even close at that time. But this guy continues to be so damn good. And I know next July 1st he's going to be 41, but he's going to return to the Twins in 2021. Write it down. You like writing things down. Write this down. Now over to Dex. All right. Uh, Dalvin Cook's contract extension will come by Friday at the latest. Okay. It's going to come in the next 48 hours. I feel wow. like it's being worked out. And by Friday at the latest, Dalvin Cook will have his contract is extension. this being is this a gut feeling or is this being said with some inside knowledge from people that you might know uh this is all gut feelings my sources at the vikings uh are, are no longer there so i this is all just gut feeling okay but thank you for asking write this down you know i'm gonna piggyback off this one okay so dalvin cook whenever he signs the extension i think this is going to be a mistake but the vikings are going to guarantee dalvin cook at least 22 million dollars like that was all right they're going to guarantee him at least twenty-two million. So then, so they'll essentially be guaranteeing him like. But you don't agree with this. I'm saying that they, sh- if it, that ten million dollars a year in guarantees toward the cap, anyways, gotcha. would be where I would, I would probably draw a line lower than that. I think the Vikings are going to be drinking that Dalvin Kool Aid here. Yep. So they will guarantee him at least twenty-two million dollars. Write this down. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, back over to Mark. Okay, write this down. Jerry Meals will be an umpire in the 2020 World Series. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yes. Oh, Old Jer. oh, Jerry Meals. Meals yeah. on wheels as far as the strike zone <laughs> yeah. is concerned. Yeah. You know, he, he umpired in the playoffs last year. He was in he was in the ALDS. And, you know, we got a shorter season now, so he has fewer opportunities to tank calls. I mean, don't get me wrong, he'll be a disaster. But he's going to be a disaster in the World Series. Was he at second base last night? Yes, he's going to be so a he, home plate. He's home plate on Thursday for the Brio start. He blew the Eddie Rosario slide too. That was a great slide by Rosario. He slid in. Yeah, his no, hand came off the bag, but his foot was on the bag. And there's Jerry Meals, literally like a foot and a half away, staring. His, <laughs> Jerry Meals' incompetence knows no boundary of where he umpires. Like it's not like oh he's a bad home plate um- umpire, but you should see him at first base. He's just awful. Yeah. I, I, I That's do a great write that down, though. For anyone who hasn't done it yet, Google Jerry Meal's blown call oh. and watch the blown call in God. the Atlanta Braves, I think, Pittsburgh Pirates game from like 10 years ago. And he still has a play. job. It's unbelievable. It's unreal. All right, Owen, your second swing. Write this down. So there's a lot of uncertainty with the college football season upcoming. Some are playing in the fall. Some are playing in the spring. I don't really know how, how logistically that's going to work, so... Write this down. There will be no college football national championship game for this upcoming season. I think, actually, I think they already announced that there would not be an official national championship game. I be, let me just Google that okay, real quick. That, I just, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want Owen to to get discredited off, here off right, right off the right bat away. here. So hold on a second. NCAA football there's, national there's championship. SEC, they're playing right. Is Big Twelve? Are they going to play? Right now they are. They are right now they are. But okay. I think I think I saw that. But if you don't have all the conferences playing, there's a chance they're just going to bag the. Well, yeah, it would make I, it would make sense if if they weren't going to do it. Because right, let's do it this way. Because I can't find it in time, and I don't want to derail the whole segment. If that is the case, then we won't give Owen an incorrect for this one. We'll just take it off the board. Okay. Okay. Is that fair? Unless you want to replace it with something. Uh no, I got another one in the bag. I can replace it. Okay. okay. All right. Write this so, down. Write this down. Paulo Costa, when he faces Israel Adesanya for the UFC middleweight championship, uh, will beat the current champion, Israel Adesanya. You might have to spell that for Declan. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again um, for Declan. Yeah, so Adesanya, A-D-E, 
S A N Y A and oh. Costa C O S T A. You got it. Okay. I guarantee Declan still spells it wrong. Yeah, hundred percent. <laughs> One hundred percent. Write this down. It sounds like write the spell down, is like turning into the spelling bee. So, so you said Costa will win or he'll lose? Costa will win. Costa will there win. Go. Okay. Got it. Cool. All right. All right. Over to Judd Zilged. It might be a mistake, but Jose Barrios will start for the Twins in the first round. He will get a start in the first round of the playoffs, uh, despite the fact he has struggled. Um, I think that uh, Rocco is still going to give him a start. I'm not predicting the game, by the way. I'm just saying Declan in the first round. So okay. right, right now, the, the first round rotation is Kent Maeda. Probably if Rich Hill is healthy tonight, it's probably Rich Hill in game and two. Dobnik, and then Randy Dobnik in game start three. Burrios. I think he's going to start Barrios in one game. I just have a feeling. Write that down. I, I don't have a pencil. Well, remember that, Dan. All right, back to Dex. Second prediction. All right, uh, Tyler Duffy will pick up a save before Taylor Rogers will. Whoa! So the next time the one of the two change. get the ninth inning or get the official save, Tyler Duffy will get credit for a save before Taylor Rogers will. That's a ballsy call. Although there's a loophole here, and it's fine. Like mm-hmm. Taylor Rogers is not good back to back and was not good last night. There's no way Taylor Rogers pitches tonight. But Sergio, so will. if it's a close game, but they'll close. He he has shown a propensity then to have Sergio close and not. There, there's a weird thing with Duff that I don't understand about why they don't allow him to close games. Yeah, I don't know. It's Sergio's it's, got like three or four saves. Write this down. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right. It's back to me, right? Yes. All right. Write this down. I hate to be a buzzkill here, but Kenta Maeda, who just threw the most pitches he's ever thrown in the Major we'll have League Tommy game last John night. Tommy John on Friday. Yeah. <sighs> Kenta Maeda will allow three earned runs or more in his next start. So I'm just predicting. Not, I don't know if it'll be a train wreck, but he's not going. He's going to labor a little bit in his next start. Three earned runs or more in his next start. Okay. And just to clarify, I don't know if they would do this. I'm going to say outing, because if Outing. If they use an opener, I don't want to get dinged for using the word start. Phrasing. It's important. This. Okay. Write it down. You like writing things down. All right. Back to Mark. Your final prediction, Mark. Okay. With uh, the NFL preseason being shortened and no preseason games, I think defenses are going to be way ahead of offenses. It's easier to get 11 guys to swarm to the ball versus, you know, be orchestrated in the in football. The- <laughs> yeah. We usually see in week one a blowout, uh, usually a couple of them. I don't think that's going to happen this year. Write this down. During week one of the 2020 NFL regular season, no team will score more than 31 points. Wow, just a slog fest. I think you're on the right track. I think the first month is going to be awful football. We could see some bad defensive communication, too, that just leads to full-on blown coverages. I could see it going But the timing of the offenses is going to be just brutal for a while, I think, for for a, a lot of teams. Yep. So, Mark, uh, three great predictions from you. Since you have this massive platform right now, before we say goodbye to you, would you like to thank anyone in your life that got you to this point? Absolutely. I want to thank my wife, who's a native Minnesotan, who uh, supported our decision to move here from from Buffalo, New York. And I'm really happy she did because I love it here in in Minneapolis. And I want to thank you guys, too, for having me on today. It was a lot of fun. Awesome, Mark. Thanks, man. Write this down. All right. Over to Owen. Your final prediction, Owen. So I'm putting all my power into this one. Uh, UFC 254 is going to take place later this year. Um, Khabib Nurmagomedov, he's 28-0. He's barely lost a round in the UFC. He's nearly a 4-1 to favorite over Justin Gaethje. Write this down. Justin Gaethje will beat Khabib Nurmagomedov when they fight. All right, Declan, spell Khabib's last name. What, what was what was even the last name? I, I he was, pronounced it without a glitch. Lost, that was a great. I, I was lost when he said Khabib. That was I, good. I, I was even just trying to do that. I think you're good with just Khabib. Yeah, yeah. I was. Right. I would just take one name so, for me. So you're Justin Khabib. Justin Gaethje will beat Khabib. Yes. Got it. I love it. Okay. That makes it easier. Yep. for Good Thank pronunciation, you, though. Yep. I mean, that was yep. just flawless. Yep. Uh, Owen, since you have this massive, gigantic platform right now, is there anyone in your life you would like to thank that got you to this point? Well, I'd like to thank you guys for letting me on, and also shout out to uh, Hound Dog Hooverman listening in St. Croix Falls. He's a big fan. Hound Dog. All right. Let's give a shout Way out to, to go. Hound, Write this down. Hound Dog, man. All right. Appreciate you, Owen. Appreciate you, Mark. Say goodbye to those guys. Judge Zilgad, your final prediction. Final prediction. Again, um, the wording of this is very important so that we have this straight. Cam Dantzler will be one of the Vikings' top three cornerbacks in the opener that they when they play, I'm not going to predict. I'm not going to say like against snap, the Packers. Snap okay? counts or no, like, no, no. He will be in. No, he will be in the nickel. So it's a top three. So so if I say he's going to start and they open with two guys, 
Right. Then I'm wrong. But if you say top three, top three and means Gladney the starts means and tears his ACL, off. and then Cam Dantzler plays 80 snaps. So you're just saying I'm saying he'll when, be the, he'll when be the f- they deploy the nickel, he'll okay. be one of the top three. Okay. So he'll basically win a job out of out of training camp because Gladney's knee problem is going to cause a bit of a problem. Write that down. I don't have a pencil. Well, remember that then. And for Declan's third prediction, he actually pre-recorded this before the show because he was worried. It's a Judd prediction. Yeah, it can still hold up. And he was worried that it would come off the board between the start of the show and write that down. Okay. So I'm just going to – I have not heard this yet. Go I'm going to click play on this. Okay. Go for it. All right, write this down. This is recorded on Wednesday, August 19th at 930 in the morning. Judd Zolged will rip the Twins for allowing – Kenta Maeda to go into the ninth inning with a career high pitch count. Again, Judd Zolgad will rip the Twins in written or audio form, allowing Kenta Maeda to go into the ninth inning to finish his no hitter with a career high in his pitch count. And it's still that could still happen. That, no, no, no. He already, he, I already, he already said, said I, I would have brought him back because I asked him right off the top of the yeah. show. For, for, I know you baited him. I, 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 I like that. So I knew the premise of Declan's prediction. I had not heard the actual prediction yet. Okay, all so right, I said, yeah, yeah. was it a good decision to run him out for the ninth? And Judd said, yes, it was the right decision. Yep, and I would have brought him out myself. So you just came. Uh, so, so what if? All right, I'd like to see the uh, new uh, leaderboard now. But, but what if? <laughs> Let's see the new leaderboard. <laughs> okay, Let's get a new leaderboard. So what if in his next start, Tom, he, he absolutely blows up his arm and he has Tommy John? You're not going to rip them in a column or anything the next No, because I just said no, because I just said I didn't that give that a timetable. No, I didn't give a timetable. But, but I'm not going to come back. I'm not going to tell you today that I think they did I, the exact right thing. I specifically did not wait, wait, give wait. it a timetable. Wait. For this exact reason, because I know if he blows up his arm, you are going to rip them <laughs> no, to shreds. No, that's not how it works. That's how you work. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't say that they did the right thing and then rip them after that. So if I had said it was a questionable decision and he blows out his arm, then you're exactly right. Take it by, take it off the board, but if this happens, I want a home run in retribution. I want Oh, it you back. can have it, yeah, because it it's back. not going to happen. All right, so. you can, all right Declan, you can, you're in charge of monitoring this moving okay. forward here, okay. just in case. Because I would need to then say what I said before I now disagree with <laughs> and that they made a mistake. Okay. All right. I uh, all right. So let's see it. I can't change this on ah! the fly here, but but the but the average Declan's average is down to four fifty nine. Yes. Four fifty nine. Okay. Judd is at four forty seven. Nelly Cruz is getting closer. Four fifty nine. Four forty seven. All right. I'm gonna write this down. Write it down. You like writing things down? That debacle. I'm gonna go with the Jose Barrios prediction. All okay. right. I'm gonna stick with with the Twins theme here. Jose Barrios in his next start. When is he next scheduled to pitch? Thursday tomorrow. Jerry Meals, I told you. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so he's going to pitch against the Brewers tomorrow night. Jose Barrios in that start will figure it out. He will go at least. That's right. I'm going to leave it. Carl I'm, 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 he, he will be the man. Jose Barrios <laughs> will pitch at least six innings okay. and will allow two earned runs or fewer. So he will figure it out tomorrow night. Six innings or more Okay. and two earned runs or fewer. Quality start. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. Bert? Quality start. Write it down. You like writing Where's things down. From? Write this down. And, and what, what were his statistics <laughs> last couple of years? Could you give me his uh, win loss record? Jose, ERA. Jose Barrios, six feet tall, two hundred five pounds, born on May twenty fifth, nineteen ninety four. Throws right handed from Bayamon, Puerto Rico. In his Here's sixth lovely. year in the major leagues. <laughs> yeah. At the major league level. At the major league level, do not screw that up. And how many uh, Rawlings Gold Gloves has he worn? He's <laughs> One. He's, he's one Warren and three. And, Warren and one. and three on the season with a 5.92 earned run average and 24 strikeouts. Mm. I'm sorry. He's in his fifth season at the major league level. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Get it right. It would be hilarious if Burt did that, but with, with like saber metrics instead. The Babip. H- Jose Barrios with a minus .3 wins above replacement mark this season and be. a two fifty seven batting average on balls in play. So it, great. his if, strikeout percentage is... If he did that, would that be Bizarro Burt? 